Hey everyone, I've noticed that some people are having troubles writing their science papers, so I thought I'd make a few videos about it to help you out. The first one here is going to start with introductions. The first thing I notice when reading student papers is that they tend to write more about society issues than actual science. For example, Global warming is killing the fish because fish populations have decreased since last year. This presents a problem for people who are living near oceans and rivers whose jobs rely on selling fish and communities where fish is a staple of their diet. The problem with this example here is that there's no explanation of the mechanisms at work. How exactly is global warming related to the dropping fish populations? It's not mentioned at all. In fact, it spends most of its time explaining how bad the effects are for people. This may be acceptable for subjects which focus on social issues, but not for science. Stick to the science, not so much about the social issues. The next thing you need to think about is who is your target audience? This will be specified for you on your task sheet, but if it's not, it's generally assumed that you'll be writing for a science peer in your classroom or your teacher. For example, if you are in Year 8 Science, then your assignment will be aimed towards a Year 8 Science audience. Similarly, if you are in a senior uh, science class, such as Chemistry or Biology, then you will be expected to write in that way directed towards somebody who is in the same senior level as you. This is an important thing to think about because it tells you what kind of language you are going to apply. If you're writing for your science peers, then you are expected to write with terminology that is appropriate for their level that they can understand. The language in your textbook that you are using in class will also be a good indicator of what this level should be. Use as much relevant terminology as you can. This will make your writing more concise, as well as demonstrate more of your understanding. The first bulk of your introduction is writing in great detail about the important, relevant science concepts to your topic. A common mistake that students make is to write at great length about irrelevant concepts, which is a lot of wasted effort. The way to figure out what are the relevant concepts is to think about what relates to your topic and draw a mind map. For example, if I was doing water quality, I would think about things like acidity. What are acids? How can they be measured? Salinity, turbidity, heavy metals, and so on. The next step is to be specific to your topic. So cross off any concept that relates to a technique that you did not use. Students often find it difficult to figure out what are the important concepts. And the way you can do this is you can examine your target audience and the things that they know and look at the concepts that are listed in your mind map. If you find that there are some concepts that your audience already knows about, then you can cross them off your list. What you're left with is usually the specialized concepts that you should be focusing on primarily for your topic. The next bulk of the introduction should be about the techniques that you are going to apply. Why and how do they work? If I return to the water quality example from earlier, I may choose to use connectivity as a method for estimating how much salt there is in my water. Since salt conducts electricity, I could compare the amount of current that tap water produces in a fixed volume of water uh, and compare that to how conductive, uh, say, salt water is, that I've manually added teaspoons of salt into a same volume of water. By measuring the difference in connectivity, I should be able to work out an estimation point of how much salt there was in the tap water. So by around this point, you should be looking at maybe a roughly 50-50 split between the relevant concepts and the quantification techniques that you are using. The following sections are not as essential as the previous, but they do help inform the rest of your paper and it also demonstrates more of your understanding to your teacher. When I read papers, I actually like to see students write a bit about the variables that they will be going to test. And there are three categories of variables. There, there is the independent, the dependent, and the controlled. 
The independent variable is the variable that you will manipulate throughout the course of the experiment, which will then further cause changes in the other variables. In the water quality example from earlier, the variable could be the location of where the water comes from. So I might take a sample of where of the ocean, of uh, the river, and maybe the tap water. The dependent variable is the variable that will respond to those manipulations. There can be more than one, and these will be the variables that you will measure for any changes that might occur. For water quality, acidity, turbidity, salinity, and heavy metals will be examples of dependent variables that you would expect to respond to any changes of where the water comes from. The controlled variable is the variable that you will keep the same for every test that you do. You should list as many of these as you can to keep the tests as fair as possible. This allows you to make fair comparisons later down the track in your results. But there can be quite a number of those controlled variables, so list only the important few of them in the paragraph. Leave the rest of your list into a table which, would put, which you would put later on in your paper. The last section that you can add to your paper is a paragraph about your predictions and why. This demonstrates that you've taken the time to sit and think about the concepts and see how they fit together. The generic form goes as follows. If the dependent variable is increased, then the dependent variable will increase or decrease because dot dot dot. For example, if the boiling duration of the water sample is increased, then it is predicted that the number of microorganisms present in the water will decrease because the proteins required for functioning and reproduction within the microorganisms will begin to denature due to the higher kinetic energy activity at higher temperatures. I hope these tips help guide you to writing better science papers. And remember that your teacher's advice should always come first. So be sure to listen to the directions about your assignments. I'll see you again next time when I talk to you about the hypothesis, method, and results.